Guys, we're over here at the shop and we're gonna get Dale Jr. into the garage, get it up on the hoist and give it a good going over. Something we couldn't do before we made our 2000 mile road trip from Kansas to Canada. So there are a few things that we do know and that is the rust. Rocker panel rust, rear quarter rust, and the rust at the back of the tailgate, which we'll get a better look when we get this thing up in the air. But what we don't know is just that. It's what we don't know. So we've got to get this thing up in the air. We're going to check the front end, the suspension components, maybe pull a wheel off or two and check the brakes. Uh, I do know that the rotors are pulsating. Probably from that time that Grant almost got us run over by a semi-truck. That wasn't his fault. But it's time to get this thing up in the air and have a really good look to see if we actually did get our money's worth flying all the way to Wichita, Kansas and driving this thing home. All right, so we've got this thing up in the air, and uh, this is my first opportunity to look this far, really. And, I mean, we still got paint on the frames, on the control arms. I did hear some creaking coming out of what seemed to be maybe those front springs. Um, but we're going to give the front end a shake here in a minute. Bushings are worn out there. Those ones look like they're pretty good. Bump stops, got a little cut in her. But again, the frame is in good shape. Pitman iron's good in grease. There's grease fittings on it. As we come back here, cross member looks like it's in good shape, not all beat to pieces. I think these shocks have seen better days. Fresh flash rust on the caliper there. That one might be original. No major leaks. Got a looks like a Wix filter. That's good. Back here at the transmission, we've got our speed sensor. Might be leaking around there a little bit. And we thought that the vibration we were getting quite possibly could have been this rear mount moving, but uh, it also could be this uh, steady bearing. That looks good. Looks good there. And that, we also thought that it might be the uh, pinion angle. This thing has been lowered with some rear shackles back there. It is not a flip kit, so this is still, the axle still on the bottom. A flip kit would have put it on the top of the springs. Uh, floor looks like it's in good shape. Common thing, when you grease your steady bearing, it flings the excess grease out under your floor. Uh, floors look really good. Cross member got a little bit of flash on it. Nothing serious. A little bit of scale back here, but we'll be getting into that. Same thing here with this rocker. A little bit of scale. Still quite solid yet along here. Really good shape. A little more rust than I figured I would see coming out of the Midwest, but like this is New Brunswick good. This is like New Brunswick mint. Uh, we come over to this side again. Frame still has paint all along here. A little bit of spots right there. Nothing too serious. Floors are excellent. This is a common area for these things to rust. This cross member here up into the floors. This is your front seating area. Everything. Really good shape there. This is where your catalytic converter used to be. Because there's the shield. And then back here, this is where we knew we had some problems. Uh, this rear inner rocker uh, in here, which is kind of uh, see-through uh, back there. Rear wheel wells, really good shape. Oh, I guess there's a little bit of a hole right there. Might have to patch that up. This has been banged up, but it's also got rust. So we're probably going to be doing the same repair on this that we're just uh, finishing up on Dale, the truck right now. This is our spare tire, and uh, the plug is popped, and I can feel and see the rubber tire right there. This has been banged once or twice, and uh, the new springs, they've got some grease fittings on there. 
there's our big 37 gallon fuel tank. That's huge. Uh, trailer hitch. This one's coming off. We are going to figure something out to do with a trailer hitch so that maybe uh, this is hidden in behind the license plate. But as you can see, it's been dragged on a few times. There's only about four inches clearance between this and the road uh, when you're driving. Um, up in here, the fuel filler area, this is good. This is our problem area. The inner part of this fender is gone. This is our structural support for the tailgate. There's our tailgate hinge uh, right there. It's moving free. Uh, it's, just, it's just not attached to anything. This whole piece right here, we've got a new one coming, compliments of AMD. We come over to this side. This side's not much better. We are going to be replacing not just this piece, but this outer piece as well. And again, the hinge is still connected here, uh, but we're going to have to replace all of that, which means the gas tank's got to come out, trailer hitch, bumper, uh, some of the interior is going to have to come out in order to make that repair. That's a this winter project. That's not going to be something that we're going to do right away. Uh, however, we may tackle this stuff right away. Back here, it looks like we've got the air shocks, uh, which we did put air in on our ride. We got about 50 PSI in there right now. Uh, but man, this thing hits hard. I think it might be up front. Uh, the back seems to be have a little bit more cushion, especially if when John and Grant were sitting in the back. They said, yeah, uh, it felt great. Here is our GM 10 bolt. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. 342 gears in here. Gonna be a lot easier to find some gears if we wanted to make this thing a posi, which we probably will. Tires are like new. As I mentioned, they had a date code of 2022 on them. Not too worried about those right now. We are gonna be upgrading to bigger wheels and tires. A um, little bit of weeping here. Nothing to be worried about. No huge scale. Uh, no, uh, a little bit of dampness. I mean, it's not even wet. It's just creeping, uh, the pinion seal. Uh, but this pinion angle could quite possibly be where, uh, our vibration is coming from. Putting a little bit too much strain on this U-joint. That looks like a new U-joint. Uh, the seller said he had put one in there. Uh, that U-joint looks like it's fairly new. Not a lot of flash rust on it. Uh, up here, that one quite possibly could be the original, and the output shaft seal got a little bit of a leak on her there. Nothing, nothing too worried, of, nothing to be too worried about. Brake lines, fuel lines, all look good. We are going to change out the fuel filter at some point. We don't know when that was changed last. It does have a little bit of rust on it. Been there for a while, but overall, so far, I'm not disappointed. Everything that I knew was wrong is wrong. <laughs> Maybe a little bit more on that back tailgate area, but. Again, we've got everything we need coming for compliments of AMD. Now we're gonna get this thing down to eye level and we'll give that front end a shake. Check the ball joints, check the tie rods, make sure everything's there because you know what, quite frankly, our shake could be coming from a bad tie rod, wheel bearing or ball joint. Let's take a look. So tie rods feel good that way. A little bit of something there up and down that could be wheel bearing we'll check that out uh, but it also could be could be ball joint we'll put some grease in it see if that goes away let's check the other side So we'll check those uh, wheel bearings before we go too far. Um, and we'll actually get the wheels and tires off so that we can check the brakes. I know this one here, uh, we've got a fair amount of brake dust coming off of this left front wheel. Um, so it could be just the composition of the pads. But the whole trip, when I got home, this wheel was just completely dusted. Uh, the rear ones, not at all. Let's get this wheel off and we'll take a look at those brakes and uh, pull that dust cap, check that wheel bearing. So the brake rotors look fairly new, but like I said before, all it takes is one hard braking application to warp a rotor. If these things are made in China and they're just cheap metal, uh, they can warp very, very easily. Um, the pads actually look really, really good. The inside pad, lots of meat there. Uh, the outside pad, 
same thing. But uh, we are getting lots of brake dust. We may just leave it for the summer, but uh, if it persists to be an issue, we're probably going to have to do something about it. Uh, I will take the dust cap off and see if we can tighten up that wheel bearing just a little bit. Uh, this wheel seems to turn fairly easy. It's not hot. And we did check that on the trip periodically to make sure that there was no caliper sticking and, uh, and you know, no wheel bearings. Uh, everything's got grease fittings. Right down, I guess the uh, Pitman does not have one up here. Um, but we got inners, outers on the t uh, inner and outer tie rods. Upper lower ball joints, we'll grease those up. See if they'll take some of that slack out of there as well. And uh, we'll check the wheel bearing, make sure everything's good. So on this wheel bearing, we were able to get oh, a, a small turn. The cotter pin used to be on this slot on the castle nut. And we've got it turned from there to there. So we'll stick the cotter pin back in here, put the wheel back on, check it again. And we're also going to grease up our ball joints just to make sure that that wasn't what the issue was either. But I'm confident that by turning that a little bit, tightened up that wheel bearing and still allows that wheel or that bearing to turn quite freely. Now, for those of you who are either new to the channel or new to mechanics at all. Neat little trick that I learned a long time ago from my dad was when you're putting a wheel on a hub, always start with the bottom lug nut to get that thing held because when you let go of it, a lot of the times the weight of the wheel wants to fall like this. If you get that first lug nut on there on the bottom, it can't fall forward towards you from the bottom. Therefore, it's gonna hold it in place so you can get your other four lug nuts on. Maybe that's just something simple, but something I learned from my dad probably 40 years ago, and it's still with me. And we'll come back and we'll retorque those. Let's go to the other side. So now that we've got this driver's side wheel bearing tightened up a little bit, and We've squeezed some grease into the upper and lower ball joints and the tie rod. Let's see if the play is gone. No more play. No, I think we're good there. A little tiny bit maybe in that uh, steering box. As you can hear up inside the car, I think that's just our steering column moving the steering wheel. Let's go over to the other side and get that one done. It's at this point. I'm realizing I don't think I put that cover back on that other side. Let's go take a look. Nope. There it is. Guess we'll have to do that too. But rather than take the whole wheel off and do it, I can just take these three bolts, actually there's only two of them out, of this cover and uh, tap it on from here. I'm not sure if you can see that on camera, but when I put grease to that idler arm, it spread quite a bit. I'm guessing that that took up a little bit of our slot too. We did have a vibration. I chalked it up to pinion angle, but we could have had some slop in this front end that was giving us a shake as well. We will test that once we get done here. We'll take this thing for a test drive and see if any of that shaking is gone. Let me get this thing back up in the air We'll grease up our U-joints, and then we can get her down the ground.
parking brake. That doesn't happen in New Brunswick. That doesn't happen in New Brunswick on a five-year-old truck. <laughs> okay. Consider me impressed. So now that we've got underneath the vehicle and we've kind of gone around mechanically on the things that don't work on this car, uh, let's get into the interior and I'll show you a few things in there. There's not many. But let's take a quick peek. So initially I showed you guys about the dash. There's one crack here, one over there by the other speaker. Uh, that's common on these trucks for the dash is to crack. That's one thing they never improved on in almost 20 years of building this exact same product. Uh, the speakers are blown. The left front speaker is blown. The rest of them seem to work. And the volume on the factory radio just isn't up to par. So we're definitely going to have to fix that. Uh, two minor things with the center console. So one is the latch uh, does not latch. It doesn't do latchy things. The second thing is you'll notice there's a small crack right here. Well, that's not a small crack right there because when you come around back, that small crack translates clear back into here and then down the other side. I'm guessing somebody may have sat or leaned on it at some point in time. We're going to have to heat this thing up and try and get it back into place. All the power locks work on all the doors, except for the passenger side rear. That lock does not do its locky thing uh, when you hit the buttons up front. So that is something that we're gonna have to take a look at. Could be just a bad wire, uh, it could be a corroded wire, or the mechanism that does the locking, the locking cylinder itself could just be bad. The rear heat and AC does work. Problem is, is that when the fan's on high, his squeals, and not just a little bit. And in conjunction with the rear air, all these switches actually work. You got high speed, off, and low speed. This is your rear window down here, up and down, and that's your actual rear window defroster. And as you guys saw in the first video, the power window actually does go up and down from the switch on the dash, which is good because this switch here, you should be able to stick the key in there left and right. One way opens it, one way closes it. I can't even get the key in there because, well, I think the lock cylinder is seized up. I've been spraying it. We'll keep trying it. I'm hoping that we'll be able to get that thing working. Worst case, we've got to replace the cylinder. And one more minor thing over here on the passenger seat. No, it's not the new Forever Sharp steering wheel that we're going to be putting in this. But stay tuned for an upcoming video. This armrest goes down a lot further than it should. If you see this one is up this way, that one's slanted down quite a bit. There's something in there, the little tab that holds it in place right about there is gone. Not only that, there's no padding left in there. So we're going to have to tear those apart. All four of them, actually, because each seat has two. Uh, you'll see this one here. The padding is just absolutely disintegrated. It's like powder. Um, we'll have to get those re-padded. A little hard in the elbows, but nevertheless, it's great to have two captain's chairs with armrests that work. You don't realize how much you need this armrest when you're driving long distance. Over this one or up here, it's a little bit too far away for the old elbows to reach. Now in that first video, I did say that I wasn't gonna be touching the interior at all. What I really meant by that was no upgrades. I'll be fixing the few things that need fixing, but having said that, we're gonna try and keep the interior with the exception of the steering wheel as uh, original as possible. Oh, and one more thing as I'm looking up, this overhead console is loose. Because it's loose, it shakes. And because it shakes, this door does not want to stay in the closed position. This one here stays closed, but it rattles. All four of these lights work perfect. We just got to get this thing more secured so that it's not rattling around. My biggest and only complaint about this Suburban so far is the number of squeaks and rattles that it does have on the interior. Granted, there's a lot more plastic trim than in old Dale the truck, but we will be nailing down each of those as we go on, 
I am not going to be able to drive this thing all summer with the squeaks and rattles that it has. Speaking of driving, let's get this thing out on the highway, see if we got rid of any of our shakes and vibrations. And also notice how easily this thing starts. Simple. So where we noticed the bulk of our vibration was around between 65 and 75 miles an hour. So we're gonna have to get this thing out on the highway to figure that one out. And I thought at first it was just pinion angle or maybe a U-joint. Those U-joints all look new except for the one. And I'm doing about 55 right now. And so far, no serious shaking. I'm not sure if that means anything once we get to speed. But anyways, we're about to hit the highway. So let's see what we got. So it was right about there that we were getting lots of shaking out of the steering wheel. And if I had to say it was totally gone, I'd be lying. There's still a little bit there. Could be balanced in the tires, who knows. Uh, slight bit better, maybe 20, 30% better than it was. The vibration in the seat of my pants is still there. It tells me it's coming from the rear. Again, could be balanced in the tires, but I'm guessing it's pinion angle. So, Still a little bit of work to do. We're gonna be changing the entire suspension on this rig at some point in time because I wanna go airbags. And somebody might be asking in the comments, Jason, why do you wanna go airbags so bad? Well, I want a smooth ride, smoother than what it is right now. And I wanna drop it on the ground when I come into a parking lot. Is that too much to ask? It's gonna cost you. Yep, probably is. But I've never had a vehicle on airbags. I got one now, but I want to do it too. So that's long-term goals. Let's save up some money. Maybe get Dale the truck sold first. But before we can go too much further, we've got to get this patch finished up, uh, get a little bit of Bondo on that seam and color match. We also found out that we've got some wheel cylinders, or at least this side is leaky. I'll check the other side at some point too. Uh, and we'll get that done. So we've got to have the brakes working on this thing uh, before we get it sold. And I know you guys keep saying I'm going to regret it if I sell Dale, but a lot of the things that I've done to this truck, I'm going to want to do to this truck. And we're going to have fun doing it, making some content, but we're going to change it up a little bit. We're going to be LS swapping this thing, maybe even a turbo, and we're going to be putting it on airbags. We're going to do something with the graphics on this. Uh, I like the two-tone, but we're going to change it up a bit too. Maybe some wood grain, maybe some desert fox, in stripes, who knows? And personally, I would love to keep the roof rack and the wind deflector in the back. Some of you guys like it, some of you don't. Don't get me wrong, it's staying. But let me know in the comments what you guys think. Do you like the roof racks on these things with the rear, with the rear air spoiler or not? Do you like the smooth top? And we've got a lot of those little things on the interior to get fixed up. That's easy stuff. That's stuff that we can do kind of on an evening or a weekend to make this thing an even more comfortable daily driver for the summer. If you haven't yet hit that like button, do it now and make sure you're subscribed to Old Car Guy if you wanna see the entire transformation of Dale Jr., my 1990 Chevy Suburban. There are still Dale the Truck t-shirts available in my merchandise store. There's a link, the first link in the description box below. You can also get your focus on the windshield. See, that's a windshield with the word focus in it. There's the rear view mirror. Focus on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. Uh, you can get that in many different colors with black or white print. And there's some old car guide. There's I'll be in the garage t-shirts. Make sure you check those out. You guys can help support the channel by buying some merchandise so that we can afford to do things like airbags, like LS swaps, like Desert Fox decals that are expensive. Anyway, I would appreciate it very much. There's also stickers, hats, and hoodies. There's also a list down below of some of the products that I use on my channel. There's an Amazon link down there. If you guys buy stuff down there from that, uh, you get the same great Amazon prices, but I get a little bit of a kickback for sending you their way. So I appreciate you guys doing that as well. This is where we say, stay focused on the windshield, not the rear view mirror. I love you guys, God bless. And stay tuned if you wanna see more work on Dale Jr. or Dale the truck as we get ready for the square bodies here on Old Car Guy. 
Thanks again, guys. We'll see you in the next video.